Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. My name is Angel DeSantis. I make these videos on religious trauma. I grew up in a cult called the Children of God and I make these videos and I also have a religious trauma course which I will link below um, just in order to draw awareness around the subject because religious trauma follows a very specific pattern. And in today's video I want to talk specifically about what religious trauma does to the setup of what you feel entitled to in relationship. And I'm going to tell two stories. So the first story is about me. Um, I had to fire a client um, recently because they started acting mentally like off. And this was a client that I had seen um, every day. I teach yoga as well. So that was the client. I would see him and we would work for yoga. And I had seen him for a little while and then we paused for like three weeks just due to the holidays and everything. And then when he tried to reconnect, he was, he was very off. He was very different. Um, he started asking me like, can you answer questions for me? Can you tell me more about like, what, what do you believe? How do you feel about cops? Um, you know, what do you think about like, are you an atheist? Is there anything after this? Um, and then he gave me a new address to meet him at and then told me that I was like one of the only people that he could trust and I was one of the only people who hadn't abandoned him and he was glad that he could trust me because everyone else was a disappointment. And as I say this, and I'm sure as you hear it, there, there should be <laughs> red flags just like going off. And so I thought about it and, and the argument that I had with myself in my head was, you know, you know this person, You've seen him a couple times a week. He hasn't acted this crazy. And plus, you're the only one that he can trust. And, you know, he said you're the only one who, like, can understand him right now. And then the other part of me, the part of me that watches a lot of Dateline, was like, this is the part that when the family gets the phone afterwards and they look through it, they say, why did they go into that situation? Because this person is clearly off. Um, and what I realized is that I am set up to go into an abusive relationship. I am set up to put myself in danger because my conditioning from the abusive religion that I was in is Jesus wins every time, sacrifice yourself for others. It doesn't matter if you are suffering, if someone else is benefiting, and after all, your job is to suffer. Like The more you can suffer and bear, the better you are as a Christian. That was the message that I was given. And so for me in this situation, um, I sat with myself and I was kind of thinking about it and I just had that moment of realization like, oh my God, I am not set up to keep myself safe. My conditioning is set up very specifically to put me in danger and then I have all the conditioning to keep me there. That I deserve suffering and suffering is good and the more I can suffer, the better of a woman I am. Um, and I realized that and so I immediately <laughs> was like, no. And so I wrote him back and I said, I'm not going to see you anymore. This is, this has made me really uneasy. Please go get help, but I cannot help. Um, and I felt really good doing that because clearly this person, um, I, I can't help this person. And then a, a few weeks later, I got a text from somebody who was in a relationship, in a romantic relationship, and they were struggling because the person they were with to me, um, sounds very abusive very emotionally and verbally abusive to this person who was in the relationship. And the person who had reached out to me said, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to be compassionate and I'm trying to forgive. But this person is always like yelling at me and calling me names and this and that. And this person had reached out to me because they had also grown up in a really religiously abusive environment. And so what I did is I linked those two. I said, well, if you think about the structure of how you're set up, you are set up to believe that the more you can suffer, the better you are as a human being. And so as you're in this relationship and you're trying to be good and you're trying so hard to be good and you're using that cycle, that abusive cycle that they use against you of be compassionate, try and be more understanding. If you don't understand, there's something wrong with you. And if somebody hurts you, it, like actively, then you have to forgive them. And I was like, if that was your setup, even if you now no longer believe in, you know, the faith that set up that abusive mindset, that might still be in there and that might still show up in your relationships. And I asked this person, I said, who is looking out for you? Because you were looking out for this person 
who is abusing you and claiming that they have no control over it. But this person clearly isn't looking out for you. And if you also are not looking out for you, then who is? And that is a question that I think is really important to ask. What is your setup for being in relationship with others? and who is looking out for you. And it's important that you always remember in every situation, you deserve safety, you deserve love and respect, and you deserve the ability to use your voice in every relationship you have, whether it's family, whether it's a professional relationship, or whether it's friends, you are entitled to safety and you deserve to feel love and respect, and you deserve to be able to use your voice. And if you feel like you, you um, oscillate with that, or you feel like sometimes you have to dim your light, um, or you feel like, well, I, I don't want to say this thing around this person because it'll upset them, or well, sometimes I don't feel respected, but it's not really their fault because like, if you have that inlay of trying to justify how much people are hurting you at the cost of yourself, that's something that's really important to look at because again, if you don't address the, the abusive pattern, it will show up in your relationships. So sometimes religious mental patterns are set up to keep you in a abusive relationship. And that's an important thing to know so that when you look at your relationships, ask yourself, do I feel loved? Do I feel respected? Do I feel safe? And can I use my voice? And if it's a no to any of those questions, you may need to still go back and undo some mental scaffolding from a religious past that is still linking, you might still be linking your ability to suffer with being a good human being. And those two things do not link. Your ability to suffer does not make you a better human being. It just sets you up, um, the more you think you need to suffer, the kind of the worst human experience you're going to have. So. I'm going to invite you to ask yourself those questions about your relationships of do you feel safe? Do you feel love and respected? And can you use your voice? And those are the questions to ask yourself and to answer for yourself. And let that tell you something about your mental setup and whether or not you are meant to keep yourself safe. Because it's really important to know um, that if you are not keeping you safe, who is? So. Remind yourself that you deserve that in all the, your relationships. You deserve safety, love and respect, and the ability to use your voice. And then look at your relationships and see what comes up. And again, there's no wrong answer. All of this stuff is just really useful information to have about yourself um, and about how you go through life. So I hope that this was helpful. Um, if there is anything that you want to share, uh, go ahead and leave it below. I do learn a lot and find a lot of um, the subject matter from my videos from hearing from you guys. And I know that it is also helpful for others to know that kind of we're all in this together. It's not just you if you're going through something. So please share if you have something to share. Um, and remember, you deserve love and respect in every relationship. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.